I'd like to call this meeting to order at 7. Roll call, please. Mr. Bishop? Absent. Ms. Duval? Present. Mr. Lazo? Absent. Dr. Page? Absent. Absent. Ms. Peliquin? Running late. Ms. Ryan? Present. Mr. Thomo? Absent. Uh, two present, one delayed, and four absent. Under the rules, since we don't have a quorum, the meeting cannot continue. The meeting is called to a close, and we will move on to a public presentation from the receiver. Uh, good evening, everyone. I, I do want to give a, some explanation, at least from my perspective, of what may have occurred this evening. Uh, so on March 15th, I was in communication with the chair of the school committee inquiring if we were going to hold a rescheduled meeting. Um, as you may recall, we canceled the last meeting due to the snowstorm. Um, this evening, Mr. Bishop uh, let me know that he misunderstood our communication and felt that the meeting was not uh, to be held. It was posted on Thursday as required by law on 48 hours notice. So I apologize that there was a miscommunication. Uh, I do think that the information that we were prepared to present tonight to the school committee and to the community of Southbridge is very important. Um, and as the beginning of a budget conversation, it is certainly not the end. I did share some news of this with my staff today via email and saw that that, was, that news was picked up by a local press um, outlet. And um, I felt it important for them to understand the circumstance as our employees um, and those folks on the front line delivering education to our children. So this evening we are going to begin to give you an update as to where we are fiscally in this, this year, the 2018 budget, and our steps to produce a budget that's balanced for 2019 um, so that uh, the community understands our spending priorities. So at this time, I'm going to ask Seth Racine, uh, who's uh, serving as our business uh, manager, uh, to begin our presentation. Uh, and then after, we can take some brief questions from members of the school committee that are present. And we'll provide opportunities to those members who weren't able to make it this evening. I'm certain in a future more detailed presentation where we get into specifics around uh, teaching positions and et cetera, they'll have opportunity to ask their questions and we'll get a community input at that time as well. So uh, Mr. Racine, I appreciate your, your time tonight and let's begin our presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Superintendent Villar. Uh, thank you, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, so I'm here to, to start the process, as, as it was mentioned, it was starting the conversation, uh, and here to deliver really some difficult news. Um, but again, this is not sort of the end of the conversation, it really is the beginning uh, to get everyone up to date of what is happening in terms of our financial situation. So just at a high level, as, in terms of a summary, uh, we're facing several financial challenges on multiple fronts. For the current fiscal year, fiscal year 2018. Uh, we are currently out of balance due to higher than budgeted costs for out of district tuitions for uh, severely disabled students, as well as uh, costs higher than what we've budgeted for transportation. For next year, fiscal year 2019, the Southbridge Public Schools faces a deficit of approximately 3.1 million in increased cost and this is really due to properly funding many of the financial issues that we've d discovered in fiscal year 2018, as well as continuing to fund uh, uh, union contracts. But it's also important not only to focus on this current year and next year, but also in the long term. We want to create a financially sustainable plan for the district uh, using up-to-date systems to allow us to make sure that we are spending all of our money appropriately and wisely. So for tonight, we're gonna to cover four different topics. Where does our money come from and how do we spend it? Give you more of an update about fiscal year 2018. Give you an update about fiscal year 19, next year's budget. As well as talk about the work that's been begun already with improving financial systems and structures in the business office. So where does the money come for the Southbridge Public Schools? Almost uh, nine cents for every, for nine out of 10 cents comes from the town. 87% of our budget uh, is funded by the town appropriation. As you can see from th this graph here, a small amounts come from different uh, federal and state grants. 
Usually most of it is from entitlement grants based on uh, our student population. So where does the town get their money to be able to pay for our appropriation? Really a huge part of the, what drives the, the town's budget to be able to afford our budget is Chapter 70 funding. Chapter 70 funding is the educational aid uh, associated in the state of Massachusetts. And this is based on uh, going back to the 1993 Education Reform Act, which determines an adequate minimal, minimum level of education uh, based on the demographics uh, of our population. And this is known as the foundation budget. The state calculates this number every single year uh, and calculates what it should be for every single district. Then, based on the state, the, the town or city's ability to pay determines how much they're able to receive in Chapter 70 money. For Southbridge, Chapter 70 aid, educational aid from the state, makes up approx approximately 75% of our foundation budget. Unfortunately for the town, they've been facing increasing pressure uh, for other education-related costs. So first you'll see there's a graph on the left, and this shows the enrollment for public school students in the town of Southbridge. The top line is the enrollment for the district. The orange line is the numbers of students who are choosing out and choosing a surrounding district. And the gray line near the bottom is the number of students from Southbridge choosing a charter school. So I want to point you to uh, two years, for example. Now let's look at FY13 and FY18. FY13, the enrollment in the district was 2,275 students. This past year, our, our enrollment in our district was about 2,003 students, a decline of 272 students. So again, a huge driver for the town uh, in terms of revenue to be able to pay for the district is Chapter 70 educational aid. And as the enrollment continues to decline, they're receiving less and less in terms of a, on a per pupil basis um, for our students. At the same time, the town is uh, levied an assessment by the, by the state for two categories of students. Students that uh, choose another district through the choice program, uh, which you will see in terms of the right graph, right hand graph, in orange. And then uh, there's another assessment, which is uh, what many people have also heard a lot about in the news, which is around Commonwealth charter schools. So a student from Southbridge Public Schools who attends a charter school, uh, the, tu the per student tuition associated with that student follows that student from the town to the charter school. And you'll see here uh, the orange bars have been steadily increasing over the last few years as more students choice out, as you see that enrollment going up. So in FY13, we looked again at FY13 for choice. There were 190 students from Southbridge that chose out to choose a different public school. And for every student, approximately $5,000 goes with them to that town. In FY18, this rose from 190 to 247 students, a 57 student increase. For charter, this is a relatively recent financial pressure for the town. For charter school students, the assessment here is due to a new charter school in a neighboring town and students going there. And for a student who chooses a charter school, uh, they receive more, it's not $5,000, but more of an a, a average per pupil student amount. So it's about $14,000 per student that follows those students. And so you'll see the increase there. So as our enrollment go, has been declining, at the same time our assessments to other uh, educational opportunities for Southbridge students um, has continued to increase. So after we receive our budget, where do we spend our money? 92% of our, bu our budget is in salaries, buses, and out of district tuitions. 77% of our budget, our general fund budget, uh, is used to pay for employee salaries, teacher salaries, uh, uh, and stipends and other things like that. 
And really this comes down to an education, it's a people business. For to be able to educate our students really well, we need great, highly qualified, wonderful teachers and that really comes down to paying for salaries. It's where our priority is. At the same time, another 10% of our budget goes towards transportation, transporting both students for uh, regular education as well as special education for students who may attend um, out-of-district placements. And at a district tuition, about 5% of our budget goes to, towards that, about 1.2 million of the general fund budget. I'm gonna come back to that at a later time. So let's talk about fiscal year 18. And this is really, this leads to a big part of what our financial pressures are for next year. Earlier this year, in approximately late August of 2017, we identified a, approximately a $760,000 deficit due to mainly two categories of uh, unfunded and underfunded costs. First, in terms of transportation, last spring the district went out in terms of a new bid for busing and they budgeted approximately 1.3 million for uh, regular education transportation. Unfortunately, the cost due to a longer year and additional bus routes that were needed, uh, as well as a new bid, uh, and despite, I will say, a discount by the vendor, uh, the total cost for this year is projected to be about 1.4 million, which means a deficit of about $130,000. The other major financial uh, pressure that we've experienced this year is again in another area of cost that's underfunded. So for our uh, severely disabled students who are unable to serve here in the district, uh, we provide them uh, placement in more adequate appropriate settings in other uh, schools and districts across Massachusetts. And we pay a tuition to those organizations to serve these students. The district, Southbridge Public Schools, budgeted approximately 2.2 million for these services. And we used a variety of sources to do that. We used the general fund budget, which I mentioned before, about 10% of our budget. We budgeted uh, IDEA, this is a federal grant, a federal entitlement grant for students with disabilities. And we also budgeted um, an amount from in state funding uh, referred to as circuit breaker. So circuit breaker funding is funding that the state provides to districts for, uh, for students who are severely disabled who, who you need to spend significantly more than the average per pupil. Unfortunately, this 2.2 million of these th sources of funding uh, don't meet the 2.66 million of projected costs for these students for this year. So that means a deficit of about $448,000. So we have continued to actively manage this budget down and we are optimistic that we will end the year uh, within budget, but it has been very difficult and fortunately we were able to identify it very early in the year to continue to monitor and manage down these costs throughout the year. In debt, because you, what I point, you pointed to roughly adds up to 580K. What's the remaining 180? The, the remaining amounts are in a number of other categories that were underfunded or not funded at all, including some facility budget accounts, uh, other benefit costs, and things like that that are higher than anticipated. But we wanted to show you here two of the biggest drivers, two big issues that have. Uh, contributed to the vast majority of this $759,000 deficit. If you can, um, either at the next meeting or by email, can I just have the remaining numbers, sure. please? Sure, happy would, to provide I that later. I really day. appreciate that. Great. So unfortunately, in the un underfunded or unfunded categories that we identified in FY18, these are not one-time costs, these are recurring costs that go up um, every year. And that associated for, with a variety of other reasons led to uh, what we project to be approximately $3.1 million of additional costs for next year. And this is driven, it's about 10% of our overall budget. And this gap is driven by a few different areas. First is revenue. So we expect to either have flat or declining revenue uh, for next year, um, especially due to our entitlement grants. 
So as I mentioned before, about 87% of our budget is from the town. The other 13% is driven from federal and state grants. These grants come from, in general, are driven by uh, poverty rates in, in communities as well as uh, enrollment. And as our enrollment continues to go down, and we have seen that our poverty rate has started to decline as well, both of these mean we will receive, we project, uh, less uh, federal and state funding. Uh, another huge driver, as was mentioned before, out of district tuitions for students with disabilities as well as transportation. These costs continue to go up next year. So we've been trying to not only meet the gap that we have this year, but also make sure that it increases for next year because we do not want the same problem that we've been facing this year. And as was mentioned before, um, as was mentioned, there are other, fun other costs that we have identified this year that were not funded properly, that do not go away, that we'll need to fund for next year, including uh, substitute costs, sick leave, uh, buyout for employees who are retiring or leaving, benefit costs, as well as facilities. There have also been scheduled new uh, initiatives that continue to grow in costs for next year, including uh, the dual language program expanding to grade two, as well as a planned extended day for teachers, in grades K to eight. And finally, uh, the cost for staff salary increases, and we need to make sure that we abide by all of our union contracts. And with that, and we mentioned before, our budget is mainly people. 77% of our budget is from people. So as salaries go up, so do the cost for our budget. So we have been actively working on this uh, and the known issues for several months now, and we've been working with principals and central leadership, and we have already identified about $2.5 million in reductions, uh, but we are, unfortunately, need, still need to identify approximately $650,000 uh, in reductions if, to, remain, uh, to remain balanced if we do not receive additional revenue from the town. We will have more information um, after the town manager presents his budget and we are able to meet with uh, town council at, at our next April meeting. Um, but since we are not balanced yet and so since we are still struggling to meet this gap here, it's premature to discuss any details until we've gone through the appropriate um, process to, to deal with the, the impact. Um, and you know, the sad reality here too is that uh, if we're not able to receive additional revenue to close this gap, you know, the next set of cuts become even harder. Um, and that will impact class size as well as course offerings in our schools. <laughs> so I would be uh, remiss of not, not just stopping there, but again, as I mentioned before, we're trying to solve this year's issue, this fiscal year's issue. We are working to balance for next year. But more importantly, where we need to make sure that we create a sustainable financial plan uh, for the long term, as well as have the right appropriate systems to be able to identify all efficiencies and cost savings and making sure that we appropriately manage our funding. And so we've, uh, for the district right now, we operate mainly on paper-based systems and really outdated financial systems. So we have been actively researching and looking at all of uh, potential systems to implement that will allow us greater transparency and be able to manage our budget as well as find cost savings and other efficiencies so we can put more money in the classroom and in the schools um, and give the tools uh, to our principals and leaders to be able to manage their own money uh, in an easier way as well as make sure that our uh, employees and vendors have all up-to-date information for uh, payroll as well as um, payments. So we have been uh, actively researching these We've also implemented a new budget software system. As we have seen previously, we want to make sure that we avoid uh, the problems of the past to make sure that we are properly budgeting for all appropriate accounts. So this year we've rolled out a new budget software for principals that they've been using an online tool that's allowed them to review every single position, review every single cost, and make sure that we are triple checking uh, every single cost to make sure that we've accounted for everything. And finally, we have also uh, through the support of the Massachusetts Office of the Inspector General, trained uh, department heads uh, as well as uh, uh, municipal department heads who came as well on, on the state procurement laws, mainly Chapter 30B. And so while a new financial system will take several years, really the investment will pay off 
uh, tenfold by allowing us to better access financial data to identify savings and prevent unnecessary spending. And so with that, I will turn over if there's any questions or Superintendent Villar would like to say anything. Yeah, as I said uh, on the onset, we'd give members of the school committee who uh, were able to be here this evening an opportunity to ask some advanced questions, and at a later date, those who are not here will have that opportunity. And again, we will also be scheduling a public hearing in the future um, when we do have a final budget to share with the public. Um, the, the purpose of this evening is to try to be as transparent as we can about our current circumstance and as we begin to plan and move forward uh, to produce a final budget. So at this time, um, I think there may be additional questions, and we'd be happy to do our best to answer them either this evening or in a future meeting. If, um, if I may, I have a number of questions. Um, one, I have to, um, it was point, um, as it was pointed out, an article, a uh, local news organization picked up on this um, before any of us actually knew what was going on on the school board. Um, which in and of itself is really sad. Um, I feel like we should have known before um, this had happened, um, a local news organization had gotten a hold of this. But besides that point, um, it, it, the article said it was roughly about 30 staff members that were, have been identified to have been cut. Um, and in your presentation you said you've talked with and worked with local principals. I just want to make sure that we're not just targeting lower level employees, that all, we're looking at a heavy central administration as well, and looking at what we can cut there as well. Um, it's of my opinion that it's not wise to cut explicitly on the ground support and foot soldiers, especially at this time. Um, I, I am not, I wish I could say that I wasn't, I was surprised that this would happen. I wasn't. At least when I sat here with the town council, we all were looking at a budget that we knew was too big and we knew we were going to have to make cuts and we knew it was overly inflated. Um, and here we are now having to deal with the harsh reality of it. And it's, it's sad and it's unfair to the students of this district. It's unfair to the people um, who've spent their lives um, teaching in this district. It's, this is a un really unfair situation that could have been avoided, and it's sad that we're here. Um, but I, I, would, I would like to know m more. I know you said you're still working on it, but I want to know, at least to get a commitment, that you're at least looking at a he the heavy central administration we have and looking there, too, for cuts, and not just at the local, lower levels. Uh, I'll take the first stab at that, and uh, thank you for the question. Um, it is a good opportunity to comment on why staff found out, and, and in your question, you answered that. Imagine you're an employee of the Southbridge Public Schools, and you come to work every day, and you give all to your students, and you hear on the news at night that your boss was talking about cutting your job, and no one told you. So my staff got uh, advance notice of this meeting and the content of this meeting because I believe they deserve to know because they are uh, putting it all on the line for our kids every day and this decision is not something that will be easy for any of us to make. I, 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 to, and, and to your question about uh, cuts at central office, absolutely. Um, we are and have established uh, plans that will go through the entire organization and will be mission driven as to how can we best serve the students and I am one uh, who does, in fact, support the teacher in the classroom. And that, that is the focus, is to set the stage so teachers can be successful. And that means they, one, need a reasonable class size. Two, they need the materials and training that are necessary to be successful. And then they need um, support to do that work. So that's the lens we're looking at this through. And when we do produce a final budget, I think you will be able to see uh, clearly where those reductions come from. And I do believe um, you will see that it's, it is not one where we um, just cut classroom teachers. In fact, um, that's the last place we'll look. I, I, just, I, I do want to clarify that my problem wasn't with staff finding out. It was with the fact that we, as school, I got home out of work and found it out over social media that we were facing a $3.16 million cut. That is unacceptable. We as school board members should have been included in that announcement. So we knew what was happening on the ground. We are elected by the people. So we, when we're asked questions of this, I couldn't give them an answer. I didn't know anything about this. We had no idea this was coming down the pipeline today. I didn't. I don't know if the chair did, and the chair's not here to defend themselves, but uh, I didn't know. 
And that would have been something I would have liked to have known and been included on as a school board member, as an elected representative of the people of this community. Well, I, I certainly appreciate um, your feelings on that. And quite candidly, it's not going to change the outcome. So as we move forward, we need to work on solutions to produce a budget. Um, and the effort has to be put forth to working with the staff and solving problems in the classroom. Um, so communications, you have a PowerPoint in your hand that no one else in Southbridge has. So you have first access to that information. And you also have uh, the ability tonight to ask questions. Uh, my staff did not. Um, so uh, I'm not going to be apologetic for the fact that I communicated to folks. And you do have the information um, that we feel is appropriate to share at this time. And when we produce a transparent budget, we'll share that with you and the public as well and be happy to answer questions about it. Um, but it's not about who sees what first. It's about creating a plan that works best for Southbridge. Mr. Villar, I had a question as well. Do you have a question, boy? Yeah. Um, I would just like to reiterate that I also share Mix Ryan's concerns about us finding out about the financial future of the district from social media as opposed to central office. I mean, that just does not strike me as inappropriate. I've been a board member in this town for 12 since 2012, and, and in this time, there have been communication issues with you know various people, but none. I feel like this has been like the most egregious communication issue I've ever experienced as an elected official. So, I understand you feel differently, but I would be remiss if I did not say something. And I will have more que specific questions about the budget at the subsequent school committee meeting. I do apologize for my lateness. I was informed by the chair that this meeting was canceled, and so I did not drive here. Thank you. So with no other questions, um, importantly, we will be producing a transparent budget that we will share with the public at a public hearing. Um, uh, your comments are taken under advice, but I'd have to remind you that as a receiver, it's my duty and responsibility to put together the school budget and to work with the community to do so. Um, I certainly, um, to the extent possible, would like your input. And that was the purpose for us holding this hearing, even though a publicly noticed meeting was not held because folks were not able to come. Um, so we're going to continue to do that, and I'll continue to communicate with the citizens of Southbridge about the status of the schools. Um, and we are going to make progress regardless of the financial troubles that we see. So I thank those who are watching us at home. Um, and again, you all have an opportunity to ask questions as we move forward to our public hearing in the future. So thank you and have a good evening.